Because China is now at the top table in the G2, it's joined into climate change, its economy has grown, its students have been educated in the States and are coming back. The same issue is there, but it's off the table. There is not going to be a war between China and Taiwan. I don't know, and I suspect many of us don't know, whether or not Iran wants to develop a nuclear weapon. I suspect Iran itself doesn't know either, because when it gets to that stage, a decision has to be made. But what is important is that the extremists, particularly in America, that flyover heartland country that sees, can't distinguish between North Korea and Iran, or Saddam Hussein's Iraq and Iran, it can't see that this is a, a regional power that is moving up to be a modern nation in whatever that region begins. It must understand the process that it's going through. Obama has to bring that electorate with him, with whatever it does. And America has to understand that Iran must also bring its flyover country equivalent people with it as it goes. And I suspect the nuclear program and whether or not it's going to have a bomb is going to be on the table for a long time. But as long as trade, a vision for what their country is, and other, other um, negotiated visions for the Middle East can be part and parcel of that, there will not be conflict. Thank you very much. Um, I, our final speaker tonight uh, is um, a, a diplomat, uh, Mohammed Sahebi. I just like uh, uh, the other journalists I was saying who are my friends, he's also my friend. Uh, we want to say thank you to him because um, uh, this is truly an engagement uh, in the House of Lords where he sat here and, uh, and people were very open and very critical. And I don't know if, if somebody was just criticizing me uh, rather than the House of Lords uh, in any meeting, I probably uh, wouldn't be sitting for so long and taking those criticisms. So uh, people have been very honest and very bold, and uh, I think he has uh, had the courage to uh, sit and listen. First Secretary, Political Department at the Embassy. Uh, I'm sure that people will have lots of questions to our panel, but before then, uh, it's Mohammed Sahib. I try to uh, answer some of your probable questions in advance, but um, uh, I would like to say, uh, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor to speak here at this conference in the House of Lords and share my views about peace and stability in one of the most important places in the world, the Middle East. I divided my speech in two, two different parts. Firstly, I focused, on the root, uh, I focused on the roots of crisis in the region and what should be done to provide peace and security. And secondly, I explained peaceful identity of Iran's nuclear program. Distinguished guests, I would like to call your Excellency's attention to one of the, mo the main problems in the region which affects any attempt to provide peace and stability in the Middle East. The situation in the region has deteriorated by Israeli measures. As Justice Richard Goldstone obviously mentioned in his report, Israel committed serious war crimes in the three-week war nine months ago. Oh, yeah. The Israeli regime still refuses to allow Palestinian refugees to exercise their in inalienable rights, attempts to ease the restrictions on freedom of movement and trade through third-party ag agreements have been aborted by Israel. I would like to speak a few words on the situation in Gaza. Gaza remained a prison for its Palestinian inhabitants, a prison which contains 1.4 million people, of whom 800,000 are youths and children. A prison in which no medical care is available, even for babies, sealed off, 
so that it is very hard for them to send anything out, crippling the, crippling the economy, barring people from leaving, or even humanitarian supply from getting in. It is what happened to a small city with destroyed infrastructure. I think it is the duty of every freedom-loving person, Christian, Muslim, or Jew, to condemn all kinds of violation of Palestinian rights. Yeah. And the international community must believe that the devastating humanitarian crisis will never be resolved unless taking measures to raise the siege of Gaza and let its people return to their normal life. Sometimes Western media criticize some Palestinian groups as the opponents of peace in the region. I would like to ask you, what do the media mean by peace? I am sure that the Muslims who believe in Islamic teachings support peace and coexistence and it, in any part of the world, because peace is a message of Islam. But we should take into consideration that peace and stability require justice and mutual respect. It is in position of Israeli hegemony and oppressed indigenous population rather than a peace plan. If Western countries see peace and stability in the region, they have to impartially pave the way by providing justice and equal conditions. We respect, we respect Muslims' rights as well as Jews' rights to decide on their faith. As a result of this belief, Iran, as a country which stands second in the Middle East in terms of her Jews' population, has recognized the Iranian Jews rise to have their own MPs, synagogues, and spiritual leaders. It is due to the religious teachings which enjoin kindness and peace upon, upon all its followers. It is one important article in our constitution. Mr. Chairman, regarding Iran's peaceful nuclear program, from the historical point of view, since 1970s, Iran has begun developing its nuclear technology with technical assistance from some Western countries, including the United States of America, France, the UK, and Germany. At that time, the US had assessed Iran's annual requirement for 20 megawatt electricity for its future use. After the victory of the Islamic Revolution, and despite severe objection of the United States and its Western partners, Iran decided to follow up her peaceful nuclear program and moved forward in the framework of the MPT. As you know, the MPT is the sole almost broad-based multilateral instrument with the membership of nuclear power states which provides the legal basis for reversing the nuclear arms race and avoid the danger of nuclear war. <coughs> Through achieving the complete nuclear disarmament with the total elimination of nuclear weapons. In order to clarify any ambiguities about her peaceful nuclear activities, Iran decided to adopt a transparent approach and has had close cooperation with IAEA regarding verification of its peaceful nuclear program. Iran signed the additional protocol allowing IAEA inspectors to start their work immediately and even before being ratified by the parliament, opened up all sites with nuclear facilities for inspection. Iran, in its continued cooperation, with IAEA, resolve all the outstanding issues within the framework of an agreed work plan. As a result of Iran's commitment to its MPT obligations, 
and by more than 3,000 per day inspections of Iran's nuclear facilities, an unprecedented figure in the history of implementation of safeguard agreements 